round four, the UFC's highly anticipated debut on ESPN Plus is just days away now. Chael, outside of the Super Fight main event, what other fights or storylines are you looking forward to? Well, here's a clue. You were just looking at her. PVZ, my teammate, Paige Van Zandt. Will you help me out with her opponent's name? Yes. Rachel Ostovich. And do you want to know why I needed you to say Ostovich? Because Paige has been calling her Ostrich. I asked her, <laughs> what is the opponent's name? I've never met the guy. I'm not trying to be condescending. I said, is it Ostrich? I can't really read it. She said, yes, it's Ostrich. All camp long, we have called her Ostrich. I found out right here on this set that that was supposed to be like a, a schoolyard yeah, ploy. A and it's dick. Ostovich. Ostovich. There you go. Paige Van Zandt is who I want to see. Listen, new weight class, new outlook, new husband. I'm yes, going to Teammate yes, Austin off the Vanderford. Market. She is working hard. She is ready to go. She's even got a new arm. She kind of been through a lot. I like this division for her. I spoke for this uh, this morning. She's only three pounds overweight. I think it's a good sign. Okay, can I quickly play journalist here for go a second? Slowly. Because... You got four minutes and 12 seconds. Okay, I mean, fair you enough. choose. Yes. You're in the gym with her. You see her quite right, often. Right, right, we right. haven't seen her for a year. She's coming off an injury right, as well. Right, 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 right. She has uh -huh. lost two in a row. She did lose at flyweight in her last fight. Is this really a new page, a better page? Like, what are you seeing out there? I, I, be be objective here for, for a second. For sure. And that, and obviously, a little bit hard, right? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, I really think so. When I see her in the gym, she's sparring more now, by example, than she used to do. She really loves uh, CrossFit and cross training. She loves to grab the weight. She loves to hit the track and run. She's spending more time on the mat. She's spending more time with coaches. She even traveled a little bit for this camp, went out to California, trained with Jason Perillo, really loved his oh, hands, okay. loved the combinations, came back with a new enthusiasm. I do think it's a better page. Now, is that to say she's going to win the contest? I don't know a ton about her opponent. She told me the opponent's name was Ostrich, and here I'm over sounding right. like a fool because there's a V in there. So it's a two-man sport is what I'm trying to say, though. Two athletes are going to yeah. go out there. It's a dance. As far as Paige goes, I do believe the Paige that you will see on Saturday could beat the Paige that you saw in her last outing. I do believe that, that she's better. Okay, so I appreciate you pumping up your teammate. I don't think there will be much argument from you when I say the second best fight on this card is Donald Cerrone versus Alex Hernandez because this is a classic Joe Silva. Joe Silva, longtime matchmaker who is now counting his money somewhere in Virginia. <laughs> he got paid very nicely after the UFC sold the company. We love you, Joe. But this is such a great fight because it is somewhat of a throwback fight. You have Cerrone, the veteran, right? You have a guy who has been in this sport for so long, winning his guy, all that stuff and more, most appearance, blah, blah, blah. And he's fighting Alex Hernandez, who is a freaking stud, Shale. And most guys, let's give Donald some credit here. Most guys say, no way. Why would I fight this guy who's 10 years younger than me? who's on the rise, who's 2-0 in the UFC, who knocked out Benil Dariush the way he did. Why should I take this fight? But as we have come to learn and love from Donald Cerrone, anytime, anywhere, he actually stays true to that gimmick. It's a great fight. I'm curious to see how Alex performs with the step up, and I'm also curious to see how Donald performs, because let's not forget, last few fights have been at 170. He's coming back down to 155. He thinks he has one more run left in him. Let me also say that, of course, I'm interested in seeing how Greg Hardy does. It's been sort of the elephant in the room. We can't ignore it his presence on the card, a very controversial decision by the UFC. But if we have, you know, if we have learned anything from his last three fights, his first three professional fights, it's that he is athletic, it's that he is very powerful, and that there is something there. Is he ready for the UFC? Is he UFC caliber? I don't think so, but perhaps he has improved a lot since we last saw him over the summer. Yeah, and I got no problem with the fight. I'm not overly excited for that one. I kind of lean towards the Joseph Benavides, but I do want to go back to uh, Alex Hernandez really fast because I think it's important to note, you may find this interesting, but he's actually teammates with TJ Dillashaw. He went through that same process. He went through this championship style training camp. I think that Donald Cerrone deserves a lot of credit. I do think that's a Joe Silva style fight, if you will, but Donald Cerrone is, is proving to be a real leader in the locker room. This is what you do. You take on the opportunities that are offered to you within your division. You don't snub your nose at somebody because you're a cowboy and you've got all these records and you got world title fights. You take on all comers. I think it provides a real opportunity and I think he deserves a pat on the back for that. Another fight that I'm interested in, and I'm not trying to pick every single fight on the card, but I do like the Joanne Calderwood versus Arian sure. Lipsky fight. Lipsky has a great nickname, the Violence Queen, former KSW champion, the Polish organization, but Calderwood has really started to come together as a flyweight. She is 2-0 and since dropping from 115, so going up from 115 to 12. I always have trouble with drop. Is it dropping up or dropping down? You know, it's a little bit confusing. But anyway, she's 2-0. and And quite frankly, Chael, there's something interesting brewing here. Jessica I feels like she is next in line to fight Valentina Shevchenko. Why? Because she's 3-0. and However, she has three decision victories under her belt. Well, Joanne Calderwood is 2-0 and as a flyweight, but she has two finishes. If she gets a third finish, what does this scenario remind you of? 
This is what just happened in the light heavyweight division, right? Anthony Smith had three finishes. Corey Anderson had three decision wins. Anthony Smith got the title fight. Can Joanne leapfrogger with a finish on Saturday? And, and I think that that was your opinion, just to go back to the, the light heavyweight. I don't think Corey Anderson was ever in that talk. Look, his record was impressive, but it wasn't main events over former world champs. I never thought you were right on that, in fairness. Right, fair enough. For more Ariel and the bad guy, sign up now for ESPN+.